Hi, friends. Ugh. How are you doing? I'm having a day. I mean, it's not like a real day. I mean, it's a day, like time is passing, whatever. But like, um, things aren't going like super smooth. I, I think I'm just a mildly depressed today. I think I'm just mildly depressed today. It happens. Um, whatever. Uh, why? Uh, why am I? Well, so I got a lot of medical shit. And today my foot is discolored and swollen. And that's no good. That's just no good. Um, but let's lighten the mood a bit. Um, it also meant I couldn't do the workout I thought, I, thought I'd, I'd do today. Um, so that meant more time at the gym and less organized day, hence my five minute late start. Sorry about that. Um, and that I am doing a lazy day. So you'll notice me in sweatpants and like a nice waffle warm shirt and music because that is my day today. Um, and we should be honest and accepting of these things and I should still be able to stream without makeup. So here I am streaming, excuse me, burping and without makeup. Um, here are two eggs I died this weekend. Um, I had some challenges. I didn't do them live or anything. There is peanut butter on my dish. That's why I was looking off the egg earlier because I had to, you know, cram a peanut butter and jelly sandwich into my mouth. Um, between showering and, and now, you know, from the gym. Um, I did swim. It was nice. It meant I didn't have to use my feet, but it meant no kicking because my foot's discolored. And I, 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 I'm slow without kicking. I'm just slow. Anyways, let's talk about these eggs. So this was dyed with red cabbage. And this was dyed with turmeric. I tried a couple others. Um, I did dye a beet one. It did turn out a lovely red, kind of like this, but then something happened. I know what happened. Um, I changed the acidity of the, what it was and it turned into a gross brown. So I'm not showing you that one. Um, I also used golden beets. It was more boring than the turmeric. So turmeric's the win here for a yellow color. Beets are the win for the red, but don't over acidify your dye so that you have to hit it with the basic substance like baking soda later. Um, which is why we have these lovely color patterns in. Um, as I was pulling the eggs out, uh, the outside was kind of mushy and I was getting some pattern from my fingers and the tongs I was using uh, to pull these bad boys out. Um, and so I sprinkled baking soda on them to try and stop the acidification process of the calcium on the outside of the eggs. But it came out with this lovely pattern. Um, they st they're not very color fixed, I'll say that. Um, they do tend to bleed. Um, and I did do a little bit of an experiment. So anything with a, a solid mark on the bottom uh, means I put it in a quick cold bath. Anything without a solid mark on the bottom means I put it, or Dave, my partner, put it in a long cold bath. So um, this is my lunch today. So <laughs> I'm just saying, these are my hard boiled eggs. Um, here they are and I'm gonna eat them because I'm hungry. Uh, why would we want a quick cold bath or a long cold bath? Uh, it's to stop the cooking process, one. And two, uh, so I have an egg steamer, so it, it does all the timing for me and stuff like that. And that's nice. But I'm going to take it quick out and put it in cold. Um, because they say that doing that cold bath right after mean, makes the eggs easier to peel. So here I am. This is a science experiment. Um, you can time me here on Twitch if you notice when I started um, peeling this egg, which one's going to peel easier? I'm of course going to eat them as well, so that may affect your timing, um, but please do let me know what your results are um, because I'm hungry. <laughs> I swam, I lifted, I did my all the things to take care of myself. I did my PT, even though I feel depression-y depression -y today. Flavor's great. Um, yeah, I'm eating an egg on Twitch. This is what you signed up for, right? Um, oh, I didn't bring Forrest did. <laughs> my bike's in the other room it's okay I can bring her in if we need to um, but I'm more concerned about having the sewing machine here I think I'm going to work on the serger um, Stoppert nylon is notorious for uh, fraying uh, while working with it and making a mess in the machine and I think that my serger is going to be better equipped for this um, it's also going to overlock the edges so I think it will discontinue as much fraying but you know, if you have another opinion, don't be afraid to share it because I, I value your opinions. Um, remember last time we cut all the fabric 
Ooh, what's that you see? Uh-huh, I know. Do you see that microscope? Mm-hmm. It's a microscope. Jealous yet? It's a nice microscope. We're not going to use it today. We're not going to use it today. At all. But it's a nice microscope. Yeah. You didn't have to give me ideas of things to look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone found it in their basement. <laughs> and they contacted uh, one of the people that works for me. I was like, do you want a microscope? And they're like, no, but I know someone who probably does. And so they gave me this almost $4,000 microscope. Um, it even has a port for camera on top of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. It's incredible. Um, so I played with it last night. I looked at some tissue samples. It's pretty cool. Um, we're going to do something exciting with it. I don't know what yet, but I'll do it here live on Twitch once I figure out how to connect the camera. I think I'm just, I, you know, the, the, the attachment piece, you can buy their camera, right? They have National Optical has a camera that attaches and it does things. Um, but it just so happens that the adapter piece is almost the same size as the lenses on my cameras that I use for Twitch streaming. Amazing. So I think with just a little 3D printing, we can make a piece to show off things I can look at really much better than that other microscope I used when looking at those bat skulls. I think this is going to be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to it. I also got my L wire in. Here we go. Yeah, buddy, this is how my bike is going to light up. You probably can't hear it, but um, this does remind me of the idea or, or how noisy L wire really is. It's really noisy. Um, and I can remember it annoying me when um, I was biking with it back in the day when I had some purple, I think it was L wire. Um, yep, I get to do all kinds of patterns and flashiness. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, look at those lights dance. You know you're jealous. Um, so that's just the, the single little ones. The little ones are really, really little, so I'm glad I got this thick stuff. Um, it does go on my flag or something. Um, it'll be fun that way. The thick stuff will go directly on the frame of my bike. Um, and that'll be cool. Okay, so we, we did the, uh, the long cold bath egg. Now let's do the quick, quick cold bath egg. Okay, timing me. Um, so yeah, L wire came in. Oh, you know what else came in is a waterproof zipper. I don't know if it's actually waterproof. I, I'm going to try to test this like I do with my fabrics. Um, but I, it would be nice because it'd be nice if I could put the things on my bike and they stay dry, which has never been a problem with my old bags, but they were just wearing out. Now the zipper doesn't even work anymore. So I suppose I could have made a backup bag just replacing the zipper, but they were black and boring. So we didn't want to do that. Um, note, um, that the golden beets that I dyed these eggs with actually dyed the interior of the egg pink. Outside was kind of yellowish. Not as good as the turmeric one. Wow, that was really fast. Okay, quick soak is better. We have this two sample. Sample. If this two item sample is any indicator, a quick soak is better. We'll see if the flavor is different. So far, no. Really, it's the texture of the yolk. I, I don't like my hard boiled eggs dry and chalky. Who likes that? Mmm. I like this yolk better, too. Mm. Cool. Cool, cool. So I got the serger out. I'm going to try to set it up to serge standing. Um, that's been a challenge in the past, but I think it's going to be doable. Um, I've got all my cameras set up, all my lighting set up for here. I was thinking about trying to sit down, but I did not want to rearrange all my cameras. It's a lot of work. It just is. I did some reading on stop nip, not, not, or rip stop nylon, rip stop, stop rip, rip stop, whatever. The stuff I'm using. Um, and they said so slow, slowly, use test pieces um, and be sure to pin perpendicular to your seam without going outside of the seam allowance because that, of course, impedes your waterproof ability. 
um, which is something I didn't really think about when I was making my seam allowances. Um, and it, it's suddenly an excuse for seam allowances, big, you know, bigger than a quarter of an inch to a half inch. And I never encountered that before. I've always been like, why are these seam allowances so, you know, big or anything like that? Now I understand why, especially if you're doing a waterproof material. Okay, we don't want to poke holes in the actual area of the garment or things that are going to freaking be a part of it and be watertight. And I did order some watertight tape too. Oh, hi, Lady Ferona. You're in and out. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna sew today after I eat my eggs. <laughs> Have you been here? Did you did you see the the turmeric dyed egg and the cabbage dyed egg? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, so cabbage dyes them this lovely teal blue color, um, and dyeing eggs is a, an Easter tradition from my culture, um, which I am genetically Polish and um, this is a recent discovery genetically Polish and culturally culturally German um, yeah just take a peek at the color of the eggs um, they're fantastic I, I love the natural dyes um, but they make these beautiful eggs um, that they dye for Easter and stuff and um, so I've been experimenting in the last few years with the vegetable dyes uh, because it just makes sense if you're going to eat it to diet with vegetable dyes. Let's be honest here. We don't need to put chemicals in our body, even if it's on the shelves. It does permeate um, sometimes. So, um, you know, you get you get red and you get yellow and you get blue and you can make just about anything. I mean, you're not going to make neon colors, right? But you're going to get something pretty good. Um, so I feel like I've got a good yellow. I've got a good blue. My red's okay. It could use some work. Um, it's very sensitive to pH. Um, what other things have I considered since we last spoke? Well, other than the amazing microscope that I have. Yeah, I know. Um, we'll go over that in, the, in one of the next streams. Ooh, Lady Ferona, since you're here, I'll make, I'll make my exciting announcement. If you, if you see me on Facebook at all, particularly in just local stuff that goes on in New Hampshire, boy, do I have an announcement for you. <laughs> Mm. Good. <clears throat> oh, good eggs. Don't breathe them in. Um, so, someone I'm somehow associated with business-wise through Manchester, New Hampshire, is a real estate agent. And he has this <laughs> Facebook page where he just basements of new england and he shows the weirdest stuff from basements in new england and i love new england basements because they're so weird the way they're made the things they were used for things inside of them new england basements are just they're like this little sliver of life that is experienced here and it just says a lot about i think the basement says a lot about the building and the person that owns it and in this basement is a ferocious looking mummified creature i have promised if if this individual so it was a conversation on facebook people are trying to identify it i'm pretty sure i know what animal it is but there's some debate on it because the forelimb on it is kind of long but you know when desiccation happens and these bodies settle things happen and it may not be totally just foreleg that they're seeing in that picture until we take it and dissect that leather skin back from that bone we may not know exactly where the joints are or how this thing is put together um but if Greg Powers gets me this creature or access to the basement so I can collect it. I have promised to live dissect it here on Twitch so that everyone can watch. I know, I know. It's it's everything you've ever wanted for in your life. Um, I'm going to live dissect an unknown animal, mummified, an unknown mummified animal, and I'll have access to a microscope like this. Just saying. This could be everything you've been looking for. Um, that's my big announcement. Are you excited? <laughs> I am excited for it. Um, yeah. Anyways. <coughs> oh, anyways, a couple things I also thought of about my bag design for my bike. I need a way to put the L wire on it without puncturing holes through it. That's what the seam allowance conversation was leading to. Um, I don't want to puncture more holes through it to sew the L wire directly to my bag. So I think I need to make some strips um, that I can then uh, 
weave the L wire through. Yeah? That's my thought. Um, thoughts from the, you guys? No, nothing? All right, all right. So I'm gonna make some strips real quick. I'll make those first so that I can put them in as I think about it as I turn around. Now I'm gonna do it out of the gray reflective material because I think it's the most sturdy. It is opaque. It will make a break in um, what we can see of the L-wire. Um, but I think that's gonna have to be acceptable here. So gray fabric. Yeah, buddy. Um, and we're going to keep it pretty narrow, as narrow as I can sew, and we'll just weave it out, in and out, right? Um, I don't know how much I'm going to actually need. Here are the two triangle shapes out of here. So I'm going to cut it from this. Um, we'll make a few, don't worry. Um, let's take a look at the general width here that I can sew half inch to a quarter. We're going to make it an inch and a quarter. I'm thinking, just thinking, inch and a quarter ought to do me really well here. We'll test it. I mean, if it doesn't work out, I'll just do another one, right? Um, I'm not too worried about that aspect. So this is where having these boards with the Y, you know, all the grids on it really makes sense. Um, oh, we had our Easter egg hunt. Um, if you're of the persuasion that celebrates Easter, even with just Easter egg hunts, it was adorable. Um, even if you're not of the persuasion that celebrates Easter egg hunts, we had our Easter egg hunt. Um, and yeah, it was really quite lovely. Um, the kids had a blast. We all had a blast. It's like the entire point of these things, right, is to have a blast. And they did. They did. Um, and I gave away a summer camp, but I don't know who won it. Um, we announced it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who won it. Um, I really don't. <laughs> uh, so some kid's going to show up, <laughs> sign up for the, the camp, and I'm not going to know who they are. So that's going to be weird, but I'll manage. Um, also, we, we put the, the eggs out really an hour before the search happened, which seemed appropriate, but one of them got completely eaten open. Um, which surprised us. Like, uh, they said that that would happen. Now, I have never organized an egg hunt before, never hidden the eggs before, never done any of this before. So I was quite dubious uh, as to squirrels eating all the things out of the eggs. Um, but it turns out it's true. They will, in fact, eat the things out of the eggs. Um, especially if you set it up overnight. That sounded like that one came from experience. Um, but we did not set it up overnight. We set it up one hour, basically, before the kids went for their search. And there was still an egg that was eaten through by a squirrel. Um, I'm gonna guess they really, 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 um, really wanted the Reese's peanut butter cup that was in it. Uh, it that's what it smelled like to me uh, upon scientific analysis. I'm pretty sure it was a Reese's peanut butter cup. So, um, I forgot that this monitor spins. This is helpful. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was adorable. I don't know who won the summer camp. Um, what other things? Adorableness from Easter. We painted eggs. They dripped all over me. Because um, that's what happens. What other exciting things happened with Easter? I don't know, I guess that's it. You know, I got my egg salad sandwich. I also discovered a, a, what I'm hoping to make another time with garbanzos um, is, I should stop cutting until I've tested this width. What was I thinking? Um, uh, Mississippi Vegan has what appears to be a garbanzo Based. Oh, there's resin there. I've probably touched the monitor with my hands covered in resin. No one is surprised. Um, yeah, so I just, I made a very pickly, pickly, well, okay, let's pull you up over here. 
There we go. Not bad. Not bad. I don't know. What are we going to do with this camera? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we're going to meditate on this one. But, um, sorry, too much trying to be done at once. But I had a very pickly egg sandwich, which is all I wanted on a nice stack of pita bread. Um, we also made, you know, one of those vegetarian fake hams. Um, what else? Uh, asparagus. Oh, and I made rock call. You know, that whole culturally German thing. Although I suppose Polish probably ate rock call too. I mean, Poland and Germany, they border each other. Okay, so we are set up to do a stitch. Let's find out if it's what we want. We're gonna sew and pin this together. Okay, let's set my cameras so that it looks like something you actually wanna watch. Here we go. Bagman and Bobbin, don't listen to them. Um, mm. It's not a great view of the camp for the camera, is it? Here we are. Well, you'll see stuff happen at least. Cool. And then the above one. And then this one. Cool. Okay, the above one. Let's see if we can get it pointed at my hands. What do you think? Let's we're gonna weave it in and out of the thread. <laughs> yeah, sure, this is normal. This is, this is what every sewer deals with, right? Where do I put my camera when I'm recording? Okay, well, eh. Oh, I messed up, there we go, field of view, let's go. Oh, here we go, that's not bad, that's not bad, right? Okay, um, first I'm gonna pin this, and I'm gonna pin it so that this side, the outside, is on the inside, so that when I turn it, it it'll be hunky-dory. Um, and I'm going to pin this because I'm not worried about this particularly being watertight. Um, this is going to hold my L wire in place. And that's important. Yeah. And here we are. So it's perpendicular. Cool. Cool. You know, I should probably change this so that a different camera is the primary view. Where's my mouse? I just moved it, didn't I? Dang it. I'm not professional, I promise. You know, you can dance while you pin. Did you know that? It's like, it's like a rule. You're supposed to dance while you pin. Oh, other exciting things. It was a big week. It was really a big week. <laughs> Um, I took some middle schoolers on a field trip to a local small gallery at one of our universities here, and it was delightful. If you love cats, Lady Ferona, um, this is the exhibit for you. So it was Allison Tenenhouse and Friends Glitchcraft, and it's, it's, it's glitch art, and it's wonderful and bright and just kitschy and amazing. I loved every second of it. And there are lots of cats in her artwork. So, um, you know, that's a good thing. Um, and I took a whole class of middle schoolers to see it. I'm not sure how it went over. Um, yeah, I'm really, really, really not sure how it went over. Um, I tried to talk to my class about it yesterday and they were all like, no, we don't want to talk about it. I'm like, all right, well then you get work, get to work on your, your community art projects. Um, you know, cause I always loved a field trip when I was their age, so I'm a little surprised, but then again, I was a goody two shoes. So it'll be fine. Hopefully it was life changing and they enjoyed it. I took a lot of great photographs. Um, so here's hoping, here's hoping they remembered it and learned something and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. I really like taking them though. I hope they had a good time. What other exciting things? 
just feels like no break. Um, my fava bean beans are sprouting, and that's adorable. My fava, my fava beans. Um, my cucumbers sprouted. I did plant those way too early. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, they're growing, and then so now I'm having to bring them in and out at night because they're too big to keep in all night. Oh, are you? That's exciting. Wow. Finally. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you know anything about them? Okay, so I have pinned this. We're going to sew it and hope that this is adequate. <laughs> Slippery stuff. Why isn't it going forward? What did I do wrong? There we are. All right, don't don't sew over the needle, particularly with what I'm doing right now, because I have a knife. This is my test. Holy cow! Congratulations! That is super exciting! Yay! Oh, I'm so happy for you! I know how long you've been waiting for that. Alright, check it out. We lost the thread somehow along the way. And it came back. Exciting. Means our tension's off, but it did come back. So we won't use that section unless we sew back over it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna trim it now. So we don't use that section without resewing. Interesting. So skip stitches is a thing with uh this kind of nylon. Um, it is a thing. So lovely, nice, stitched, straight. Now we have to turn it around, which is not as hard as it sounds, but still harder than it sounds. Um, which I could, I could cut them and then turn them. That could be a way to do it. That could be a way to do it. Um, so I need, I know what I need. I know what I need. I need a safety pin and some string. This is how you do this, by the way. If you've ever had to sew anything and turn out a tube, this is how you do it. Safety pin, string, I need a string. String, string, string. I've got string somewhere. Ah, ha, string. This thing will work out. Okay, here we are. String. And, uh, so exciting. Am I going to be able to turn this? Imagine so. Imagine I will. Yay! Okay, so to do this, we get a string, we put a safety pin on it, we're going to, this is going to sound weird, okay? 
Here we go. We're going to thread this through. Actually, I'm going to take the knot out because this string is a little thick for a knot right here. And the string is long enough that I don't think it'll stay in. Um, and we're going to push this through. See how I'm pushing it through? Push it through using that pin as a stiff piece that can move through the tube. Um, and you'll see that the string is now holding out back here, coming out the other end. And then we're going to pull it, the safety pin, through, and we're going to pin it into the fabric. Hopefully in a way that won't pull out. And now we're going to pull the pin through the tube of fabric. Yeah, this was, I think this was one of the first things my mom actually taught me learning to sew because I wanted scrunchies and she couldn't stand to buy them because they were so easy to make. Um, and this works with bigger scrunchies. Obviously I'm going a little on the small side here. I'm so glad you think it's a cute trip. It's, 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 it's something surprisingly easy once you know how to do it. So the getting started is probably the hardest part. Um, but you just got to get that fabric over that first edge. And then it just like, it's, it's a sea cucumber and it spills its guts. There we are. There it goes. Do do do. We're going to get it. Don't worry. We're going to get it right here. I just have my cameras like set up for the machine already, so I don't want to put it in front of everything else. There we go. See how it's slipping in and the fabric is following it. Now the serger edge is kind of long, so that's going to make things a little bit harder. But once we get it flipped, you'll, you'll see, you'll see, it'll go quickly. I think. <laughs> Watch me, I'm, I'm like telling you all these things and then it's never gonna happen because I said it on television or Twitch, whatever. Same difference. Worldwide audience. Um, there we go, it's going, it's going. Do, do, do. We're just gonna pretend it's going, it's going, it's going, I swear it's going. I'm gonna trim it because it's bothering me that that extra string is there. I don't know if it's necessary for you to trim it, but I'm trimming it. Um, And it goes. And I've, I've never done this with an athletic fabric like this before either. So I think that's probably impeding some of my progress. Um, the other thing you can do is use a chopstick, which is what I'm going to do real quick. To help get me started because this thing, my fingers are too big. My fingers are too big! Um, so I'm going to get a chopstick, which we usually keep over here. Um, here we go, skewer. Skewers don't work in this Long, thin, pokey tool, okay? Long, thin, pokey tool and poke. This is how you can get it started. There we are. Of course, it's, it's gonna be difficult for me because I was like, hey, here's an easy trick and it's gonna just not work. <laughs> hey, remember when I made pie live on Twitch? and used wheat. Here we are. Okay, so this is not going to go quickly. We may have to tighten up our edge. There you go. Pulling it through. The friction is getting me. So this edge is on the long side. I'm trying to think. What else can I do to make this easy? On, on a scrunchie where there's a lot of wiggle room, um, you, it just flips. It just flips. Okay, so we're gonna do this again with a little bit more of a, or less of a seam allowance. Am I just not strong enough? Is this what happening? Maybe I'm just not strong enough. 
There we go, it's going. I did make it too tight though. It's okay, totally fine. Okay, this is gonna take a minute. Ooh, uh, no, I broke it. Cool, that's another thing that can happen. All right, uh, rethinking this strategy, we're gonna use just the stick. This is another thing you can do. Use the stick and poke. This fabric is really frictiony on it. Um, so I'm thinking that has something to do with it. How far is it? Okay, so I've turned it an inch, y'all, it's an inch. Um, what's another way to do this? The other sewing machine. That's, that's what I need. Okay, here I thought we'd be getting to sewing the pieces, but, um, <laughs> thanks for that music. Uh, yeah, I might have to go get baby lock. All right, let me, let me think. Hold on. I'm going to try again using the stick. You know what I could do? Hold on, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. So if I close it and then push it, this fabric is just super grippy on itself, which I guess isn't a fabric that I, I'm used to sewing with. Okay, um, this is gonna go faster if I go get baby lock. So I'll be right back, okay? I, uh, I had a moment. I went upstairs to the attic to go get baby lock and she wasn't up there. And I was like, what? My machine? She like ran away? Where, where did baby lock go? Um, I put her away in a box here like I should have. She was in here the whole time. Here we are. I think, I think it will all make sense. Cool, cool. Plug her in. Stay over here. Baby locks. 
so uh, plugged in uh, red and green thread short so that you guys can see my stitching. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, and let's uh, let's do this differently. Um, we'll take one of these other things, pin it up. Where did that thread go that you did have? Here it is. Um, kind of fell off while I was moving her, so like, whatever, I gotta re-thread her. But, um, there we are. We're gonna pin it first. Remember, we're looking for that shiny side to make it outside, because that's clearly the outside part. And I might be able to get away with a few fewer pins. Eh, who am I kidding? Probably not. It's a nice thought, though. To use fewer th pins. I don't know how truthful it is, but it is a nice thought. It never comes true, I don't think. Maybe I shouldn't have set her up to like pin this. it on this kind of creepy but restful music. It's like the kind of music your masseuse would play while they give you a massage or something. There we are. Gosh, my foot does hurt. <sighs> sucks to be disabled. You know, that's, that's all. Just saying, it sucks to be disabled. Anyways, you know, other thoughts. Where did I license this music? <laughs> it is intense, man. All right, let's pull this out. And YouTube, so I, I post all these videos to YouTube when I'm, after they've been on Twitch for two weeks. So if you ever miss a stream or whatever and miss it in the two weeks because you're on vacation, it's fine. It's on YouTube. Um, most of the time. Sometimes I screw up. Like, I screwed up today. I did not. Oh, man, I got to do that right now so that I have two weeks ago video on YouTube. Man, I even made a calendar invite so I, re I remember to do it. A, cal a meeting thing. I'm going to do it right now, okay? I'm going to do it right now. Ay, ay, ay. Hold on. Got to get my... Oh, my gosh. I forgot. I forgot. And I forgot last week, too. Crazy. you think I'd be better at this stuff. Not really. Who am I kidding? I mean, I'm just me. Uh, how do I do this again? Where do I go? Where do I go? Oh, it's me, and I'm looking for this. Uh, cool. I lost the two weeks ago again. All right, I'm just going to post this one because I can't do it again. Just do it. Fine. It's okay. I'll stream, I'll, I'll stream twice a day or, or twice a, a week or something at some point in the near future. Okay. So here I am, I'm using my red and green thread so that you guys can see kind of where it is I'm headed. Um, I've got this instead of the serger sewn tube because um, it didn't, it's really hard to pull through. I, there is a way I could do it, but you guys don't want to sit here and watch me do it um, live on Twitch. I'm quite confident of that. Um, the other advantage to the other material is it kind of sews a knot as it goes along, and that's good. Um, all right, we're going to make a tight stitch. Should we zigzag it? Well, we're going to go straight first, 
and we'll figure out from that what we need to do. And I am giving it a very narrow seam allowance. This is probably less than a quarter of an inch at this point. And you pull the needle out instead of sewing over it. Even though my old MO was to sew over it, I got tired of replacing needles. Um, and then they like the sharp points fly through the air and stuff, so we don't want that. That that is what we call bad. Look at me, I'm so multitask, it's getting too narrow. I'm not sewing straight. Okay, maybe I shouldn't show off my multitask abilities. It lessens the quality of my sewing. No surprise, no surprise. And you don't want to pull, you don't want to push, you're just guiding the fabric. The machine does all the pulling and the pushing. Someone uh, is letting us borrow some sewing machines at the school that I work at, and one of them, well, they're both pretty good machines. They're better, actually, probably than mine, and sewing with them. I made some letters, ART for the art show, really showed how much of a better machine they are. Um, they're mostly metal. <laughs> and uh, that shouldn't surprise me, but that's like a qualification for, ooh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> that aside, um, it's, it's mildly tempting, I have to admit, to replace the school sewing machines with mine and take the school sewing machine. Um, I'm not going to do that, um, but one of them is an older, like, 1970s thing, um, and boy, does that thing run. So the other thing I'm going to do, so I, I, this is a thicker string. No, it should be fine. It really should be fine. Um, so it's like a shoelace. I'm going to get a ribbon. Ribbons are thin, and they're slicker. Let's get ribbon. Bright blue ribbon, slimmer, and let's see if that makes a difference, okay? So we're going to put the ribbon through the pin and hope it goes through without too much fighting. We're going to tie it on so it doesn't have the chance of falling off. Trim it down doo, 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 while we pick up other threads, you know, like a normal life. Like a normal life. Um, and now we're going to feed that pin through just like we did the last time, except we're going to do it better this time. Um, and with more seam allowance, really. Or less seam allowance. Yeah, this is the side I want. Okay, yeah, there's a lot more room. So we scoot it along using the safety pin. And you can use anything long that'll clip through. Like if you have, I think I've done this with bobby pins. I think I've done it with popsicle sticks that I glued a string to. It all just depends on what, what tools you have about it. I, I even think they make like kits that are like a wire thing with like a curly hook at the end. I've used those. I don't own those. My mother does. Um, so, you know, those are things. Um, this is also a great technique for, you know, if the drawstring comes out of your hoodie or your sweatpants, that is decidedly a great way to, to fix it, is just get a safety pin, clip it to the string that fell out, and run it right back through. Um, just an inch at a time, you know, and voila, we're all there. So now I'm going to weave this safety pin in a couple times. There we go. Well, really, just once. And now we're going to pull it back through and pull, uh oh, it hurt. I didn't make it long enough. <laughs> do you love that you learn everything you shouldn't do by watching me or um, is it too much? I can't believe myself right now. I'm going to do it again. <clears throat> mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, just saying. I swear I know a little bit about what I'm doing. So we can just scooch it back, maybe? No, we're just gonna, uh, so if we scooch it back, will the 
will it just fall out? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. Okay, so we're just gonna pull the whole thing through and do it again. Like I know what I'm doing. Um, I admit you can do another safety pin on this side and pin it here. It's another one. And then you can pull it through all the all the way. Um, in the same direction. If you have two safety, see, it all comes down to what tools you have available. If you have two safety pins available, we'll do it this way, because I, I do have two safety pins available. We're going to watch that and make sure we don't pull it all the way through. You're going to tell me to stop when I get to the bottom. Do, do, do. I'm no sewing with Nancy. We've established that, right? This channel does seem to be a lot of sewing. I don't know why. I just have a lot of things to get done that need to be sewn, that's all. So we have a little bit of a tail sticking through. I'm grabbing another safety pin. And what I'm going to do, wow, it, it, it was really probably just an inch in there. That sucks. See, I'm letting it bunch up. I have other cameras, but um, <laughs> there's some challenges here. Uh, so I'm going to pin through this and then through the fabric here. And that's a salvaged edge, so it's less likely to unravel, I suspect. And now we're gonna pull it through. Or we can pull either edge through, really. So, you see that? In it goes. And we can push it like we did the first one, but pulling seems to give a little extra leverage. And in it goes. In we go. Again, this fabric really seems to want to um, stick to itself and other things, which is not something I generally think of for an athletic fabric, but it's what it's doing. So we'll hold to that. Um, there's got to be an easier way to flip this. Here we go. See that? making me a little nervous. Why? Just fold. Fold! How do you fold in the cheese? How do you fold cheese into a batter? That's my question. No, really it's from Schitt's Creek, which was a great show. I miss it in my life. In we go. In we go. Once we get it to flip, I swear it gets easy. It's this this first step is hard. This is why people buy their own bias tape and, and tubed stuff, because this step can be on the challenging side. I swear I thought we were going to sew the whole bag together today. How fast do you think that's going to come together? <sighs> I ordered all the L wire. Well, I mean, we are sewing the bag. It's just a part of the bag I didn't like anticipate getting to, or that I anticipated needing. And that's, I mean, that's a lot of creative projects. So like, don't let that deter you from anything creative, okay? Like, ever. Here we go. Pulling this. 
this. There we go. See it disappearing? That's what we want. Once we get that in there, it's like gonna go, I think. I think. <laughs> We're almost there, okay? We're almost to the point where this is going to work. I swear. Pointy end isn't always good, because sometimes it pokes holes in things, and I'm nervous. But, like, why is it being so difficult? I've done this before, I swear, just not with this fabric. Here's hoping we don't need too many of these things. Because this is going to be annoying if we do. Ooh, there we go. It's in. Okay, and now it's like a sea cucumber, theoretically. This fabric really doesn't rub against itself well. It's a high friction fabric. So at the moment, I'm kind of using the fabric to propel it forward and hoping it goes. It seems taut. You know, like things happen. Can we get those phantom like vibrations? You know, like you're getting a phone call but you're not. They're really annoying. Surely it's something everyone can relate to. <sighs> not the stream I was planning on. This is such boring gray, too. I mean, there's a little neon off to the screen here. Oh, there we go. It did something. Did you see that? It flipped. See? So we're, we're reverse. The narrower the tube, the harder it is. Just remember that. And, you know, my selection of a one and a half inch piece of fabric was maybe not the smartest. Ooh, oh, it broke. Okay. Cool. Yep, it pulled through. Okay. Mm. We've started it, though, and we're two inches in. Cool. Not working. What am I doing wrong? Don't want it to be wider, man. Well, I'm gonna try something else. We're gonna try poking it with a stick. After we pull it through. We're gonna try the poke with a stick method. It's another method. You know, when you just gotta have a tube I'm sticking it in and just pulling it out to the end. Sometimes things don't go the way you plan in projects. That's why you should never do projects on a deadline. Otherwise, you'll be up all night doing it. There we are. We're going to sew this shut. Okay? Real quick. See if this works. You know, I could sew a ribbon in and then pull it. We're going to add the ribbon as a backup. I know, you're like, what are you doing, lady? I may not know what I'm doing. Um, ever think of that? We're going to cut a new ribbon. One that's longer. I'm no pro. I'm just a regular Joe who's like trying to make stuff. But my name happens to be Amber Nicole. And I happen to have a company. That's it. So we're going to use safety pins again. We're going to feed it through and then we're going to sew it shut. And I think that this whole sewing shut thing 
might help. What do you think? Try to be fancy. Don't be fancy. Just get dancy. Um. Why not? I think of other things I could do, like cut windows into fabric where the L wire would shine through. That seems fraught with fraying. Fraught with fraying? Yeah, it just sounds like some kind of band. Surely it's a band. There we go. And we push the needle through again for the safety pin. You're boring the hole. The hole's there. I don't know. I'm trying to be funny. Again, this is a great way to put strings back on a hoodie or on sweatpants when they've like gone away, when the string came out. Um, trying to think of other situations where this is particularly applicable. When you want to put elastic in a waistband, this is also how you do it. Um, really, anytime you need to feed a string-like object through a tube-like object, um, this is a great technique. I swear it works. This fabric is just a little on the stiff side. Okay. Now we're gonna sew the end of this ribbon to this, and then we're going to pull, theoretically, bring it to the edge so that we have less. And I'm sewing it back and forth a bunch because I really don't feel like losing it this time. Yeah, all the other times is fine. Trim the threads. Um, and now we're gonna we're gonna do the thing where we poke it through. We're gonna pull and poke at the same time with this. So I'm gonna pull. See that? It's pulling it. And now if we poke and pull, maybe that string will go through, right? Keep your fingers crossed for me, okay? I need all the extra luck I can get. So I really don't want to go thicker on this. I thought this was a thick, a thick choice. You can always do like a, an accordion fold instead of a, a tube and sew on top of it if this just ends up failing because of the type of fabric. We can switch fabric types. I have that orange, uh, I guess it's like an organza um, that's a little transparent. Um, so that could prove to be helpful in this situation if we end up having to thread the um, L wire through it. Um, and then the L wire is visible through all that orange, but it's coming, it's orange and it's going to go through, it's green L wire and it's going to go through an orange organza. That's just going to end up a brown glowing color. <laughs> That's just going to look like radioactive feces. Cool. Um, maybe I should have gone with like a commercial product. You know what I could do? I bet this stuff melts. I have an impulse sealer. I could melt the edges and then eliminate the need for sewing altogether. Should I try that experiment? <laughs> this isn't going well either. Mm. Getting the tip less pointy because it's already poked through once. I can feel it. Well, this has been delightfully unhelpful, this entire process. 
Let's try the impulse seal. <laughs> All right, um, get the impulse sealer out. I haven't used it before. Let's see what it does. I gotta move the sewing machine out of the way. Baby lag gets to go someplace else. Sealer. Ooh, and there's something sticky on it already. Okay, um, so if we go like this and press down, hopefully it gives a heat across a line and will melt the fabric. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna plug it in over here somewhere. Up. I'm gonna turn it all the way up, I think. Ooh, it has a. There we are. Okay. Oh. I don't know how this works. Let's try it on the rib. Ooh, there's smoke. I think that means it's working. Okay. Certainly melted the, the ribbon. Let's try again. Mm, okay, it didn't really do anything. Oh, because I'm on the lowest setting. Let's let's turn to the highest setting. Well, what if you do multiple? I've never used it before. Okay, so it it is melting it a little bit. Um, I did get this for free from a friend with a warehouse thing. Okay, so that's the length of time. I mean, it's giving heat. I'm not sure. Let's, let's try scrap, okay? I don't know how this is gonna go. Uh -huh, no. Oh look, now it's starting to melt. Hey, it's melting. All right, we figured out the secret. Just do it a couple times. we go. Um, try again. Now that it's hot. We just need to get hot. Okay. What have I got going on here? Mm, there's a little, there's a piece of it stuck here now. Okay, cool. But it did seal that up. I don't think it'll fray. So let's. See if we do it again. Okay, now we just gotta pull the piece off, right? Okay, not the best look on those edges. Mm, I don't like it. Wasn't a bad thought, it doesn't work, okay?
So what I'm looking for is a thin piece of fabric that won't fray, that will hold L wire to the bag. Cool. I'm gonna think on this problem. In the meantime, we're gonna sew the flag. No, the flag needs it too. How's the organza? Let's let's test this on the organza. Here we go. I think this is organza. I think that's what this is. We're gonna test it. I know who just has both a four thousand dollar microscope and an impulse sealer lying around. I do. Four did not work. That's that's the eight. Is this just everything exciting you've ever wanted to see in the world? Will an impulse? Will it impulse seal? Um, that's my new channel. Subscribe, like. Okay, that appears to be working. I'm leaving parts of itself behind, but does it fray is the question. A little bit. Okay, thinner fabric works. Hmm. I have vinyl. Vinyl doesn't sew through very well. All right, so, you know, making tubes of fabric, that's this channel. Um, all right, any bright ideas? Ugh, the magnets keep stealing my safety pins. I need to turn this. Like, do we just force it? Like, do I have the strength to do that? Will it work? This fabric is so, maybe I'm just using the wrong fabric. Maybe we need something a little more grippy or less grippy rather. <laughs> I did not anticipate. I thought I was just going to be sewing. I thought I'd have to make some tubes. Sure. Who doesn't need to make tubes every once in a while? Now, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this ribbon and being impressed with how strong it is. Maybe I should just take that and sew that in. Ugh. That's what we're doing. Okay. It may not be as durable as some other stuff. I don't want it to be blue. It's going to be like lime green. I think I've got lime green. I mean, that's essentially what this is, is this is a plastic fabric that's been heat sealed at the edge. Why did I freaking? Cool, I have a solution, y'all. You're not the only one that goes through those things, okay? I, I, this is not edited, this is not cut down. This is exactly what I'm doing. And it just so happens that my real mistakes are made and you, and you see what, what I'm doing. So, you know, welcome the mistakes, okay? I learned a lot there. Not entirely certain what, but a lot.
This will suffice. Let's pin it together. Cool. We're gonna pin our pieces together. And for sake of time, I think we're gonna do the flag first. So this is the bag. This is the flag. Okay? For the sake of time. Flag first. And it's gonna be really straightforward. That's gonna be the best part. Um, I am going to want to add, so here's a funny thought. Um, I thought I'd just fold it over, right? Because that's pretty satisfactory. Um, when it comes to this, but if I want to put a ribbon here um, for the L wire, We'll do the L wire at the top and the bottom. I don't know if we need to do the L wire in the middle. It's not going to provide additional tension, so we'll skip that. So what we do is we move our cords to the side for our sewing machines, move these things around, and lay these out in the direction that we wish them to be attached. Um, nice sides out. We get a good idea and then we find the middles of each of these and line them up to the best of our abilities so um these look spot on i like that a lot um but i'm going to guess that this is the outside here based on how this is folded or is that the outside i really can't tell with the stop work not on and we're going to pin this together just like this okay in the middle as possible and I'm going to pin it tightly because these things are notorious for slipping these fabrics now I don't have to worry about this part being watertight because this is a flag all right I'm gonna focus on learning a secure sewing um, over water tightness but hopefully with what I learned here, I'll be able to take it to the bags and create something that is, in fact, a little bit watertight. If that makes sense. And it's pinning okay, so I'm, I'm happy with how this is going right now. So when I sew in the other one, I'm going to get two ticks like that, and that's all I'm going to get. Um, so I'm going to practice that here. I did the centers deeper, but, you know, you get it. And should I be using different pins? That's another question. These really thin pins are great. Do they hold it adequately? It does look like they do. There we go. And any of these itty bitty like garment pins, those look good too. All right, now the other direction. And I went from the center to the edge so that we make sure we're getting in the middle here. I know all kinds of craziness, things you wouldn't have considered, but you could get it off just a little bit and it would be really, really annoying. Um, and I, I, you know, so center to the edge. That's how you stretch a canvas. Um, it's, it's how you do a lot. And if you're gonna, you know, alter a shirt, um, you do it from the armpit to the, to the arm, the end of the arm. Um, and that's a similar idea. You don't want the wrinkles in the armpit. You'd rather have a little wrinkle at the cuff, I think, instead of the armpit. Not that you should have wrinkles, but we all know what happens. It happens. And rather than, you know, pretend like it doesn't, let's prepare for it happening. It's disingenuous to presume that we don't make mistakes like ever. Because we make lots of mistakes. Don't we? I know I do. I mean, you just watched today for, for examples. I mean, I started today rough. I admitted I started today a little on the rough side. I really started today on the rough side. So there we go. Um, step one of pinning this thing together. Um, do we have the resources to perhaps pin the, uh, yeah, there's enough room here. Let's go ahead and pin it. I remember I was telling someone about how someone almost right hooked me going down Elm Street in Manchester. And they're like, oh, we're gonna have to get you a flag. I was like, I have a flag. 
People right hook me with the flag. There we go. Okay, that's that's pretty centered. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, we're gonna pin from here and go out. And we're gonna use lots of pins and so slowly to remove the pins, okay? That's just what we need to do in order to make sure we get what we want out of this. I also have patches for my business I could sew onto the bike. I was thinking about doing that. Um, like I could sew it onto um, the bags or the flag. But then like people are mean <laughs> when they're driving and they encounter a cyclist who's having more fun than they are. And um, I don't want them to retaliate against my business. And they would because we, I live in America. Um, because I'm riding my bike and having a good time and they're not. They're stuck in their cars, commuting, driving, whatever. Wait, this is a tiny, tiny pin. Oh, no, it's not. Whatever. I thought it was. I was wrong. It's actually kind of on the thick side. I have some really, really tiny ones in here. Um, they're just real thin. I think they come with, uh, like, button-down shirts or, you know, with the collar stays in them and stuff. Then they dress them up for the packaging in the store. There we go. This is going nicely. I'm looking forward to this creation. So we'll get a flag out of it today. Coolness. We may get the bags. Maybe I'll have time this weekend or Friday or something to do the bags live with y'all. Um, I really don't know. I doubt it, but you know, it could happen. It could happen. Okay, here we are. Coolness. We're going to sew this together and it's going to quickly become a flag and we're going to be inside. That's my hypothesis. Mm, they're heavy. Okay, and the camera's in the way. Coolness. Here we go. You see now. There we go. I like it. Um,. And plug it in. Oh, wrong plug. I do have two plugs here that look like they should both go to this machine, but only one does. The shorter one, of course, goes to this machine. They really should have made it like six inches longer, six inches longer for this foot plug and it would have reached the floor right now it does not reach the floor and i have it on this little unicorn box full of sand as a way to get my foot on it um i don't know if you can see that or not but that's 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 where it lives okay really need to spend some time to get that vac man and bob and sticker off my machine I told them not to put it on there I told them all right we're gonna sew this together and we're gonna pull the pins as we do so we're gonna sew a little slower than often I do. Right, and I need to move these magnets. They're very much in the way when clicking pins and stuff, which is just a no-go. There we go. Okay, so we're lining it up. I don't actually want to take a lot off. Here we are. And that's so. If I can get my foot on it. So now I'm like really standing on one foot while I sew. Here we are. I wish it didn't squeak like that. It just needs oil. Remember when it didn't squeak like that? Yeah, it was before I took it to Vacman and Bobbin. Very, very carefully, very, very slowly, we sew. I want to lift the foot just a little. Get that a wrinkle. There we are. So slowly. Hoping we're keeping the thread. The tension is looking good. And I'm using the pattern that I'm hoping I cut straight, which I, if I remember cutting straight, I think I did, so that 
the sewing together of these fabrics is quite straight. That's, that's my goal here. So that's all those neat, those pins, so they're sewing slow. I don't know, do other people use the pattern of the fabric as they sew as like a way to keep them straight? Not a bad way to go about it. First one down. Look at that, it's starting to look like a flag. Do you have a flag? Quoting Eddie Izzard here. This is my flag, at least for now. All right, let's sew the next, next seam. Line it up all nice and pretty. And in my case, I'm doing it with the herringbone pattern on top because I'm using that to guide my sewing, hoping that they made that straight. Um, I don't have any good reason other than that. So slow. So it slowly um, have the control. I'm, I'm usually a fast sewer. Because I find it usually so straighter when I sew. Oh, baby, you did not want to do that. That damages my knife. I got too close. Okay. I'm not letting that happen again. Ugh. I feel shamed. Shamed. Ugh. It's been a it's a comedy of errors today, is all. I told you today was off. We have it. We have those kinds of days. Cool. One more pin to go. I don't know if you can see that as I sew. Can you see that I have one more pin to go? picky about my surgery today because we're all going to be home. That's the great thing about surgery today. Here we go. It's a flag. Do you love it? Um, now it's not going to go like this. It kind of looks like it would. It's going to go like this um, and we're going to fold it like this and then we're going to sew straight down so the, the pipe, the stick that it sits on will be right here and it'll trail behind me um, like this actually, I think. Yeah, because we want the widest point at the highest point. So we're gonna pin it like this. This song is familiar to me. Maybe I just played it enough on my stream. Entirely possible. Okay. And I'm gonna go down this diagonal. You know what, I'm gonna move the machine out of the way. Even though it catches the camera a little bit. Sorry. Just so you can see, like, and so I can bend over this a little bit better without the foot pedal in the way. I know, I'm so picky. Picky, picky, picky. Um, and I want to make sure these seams line up because this is important to me for some reason <laughs> that it does. I could iron it. I've heard I can iron this thing. And if the impulse sealer is any indicator, I probably can. I, uh, I thought... I sincerely thought ironing this would be a like a no-go, big time no-go, but it does not appear to be. Um, apparently, you know, this stuff is used for tents a lot, 
Um, so it seems like uh, most of my advice about sewing this stuff was from tent and adventurer forums like that. Um, so I guess people don't make bike flags all that often. Um, but <laughs> that's what I was doing. Um, I hope it holds up. I, it'll hold up. I mean, it's, it's, they're not using it for their tents because it doesn't hold up. They're using it because it's lightweight, which is also the reason I'm choosing it. Liking this, liking this, we'll use a magnet real quick. So this fold isn't perfectly cut, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'd rather it be perfectly sewn than perfectly cut. That's one of the joys of the serger, is I will take off anything and no one will know that it wasn't perfectly cut. Amazing. Now the other thing we're gonna have to do here, and it may be before, it probably is, so before we, um, yeah, before I sew this together, I'm going to need to edge it. Um, just a smidge. So I'm gonna mark that with a pencil so I can kind of see where this edge is gonna end up. And then I can, um, any pencil, any pencil, or H. Oh, you're not going to mark at all. Um, to B, opposite direction. I like it. Uh, so we're going to, this is where we kind of wanted it to cut. And we're going to fold it up like this and like this. I just want to get something that looks semi-intentional. It doesn't have to be big. There we go. Like that? Eh, a little bit bigger. So it goes all the way around. Fine. Whatever my pole ends up being. I like to work in too tight of margins all the time. It's not a good practice. Don't do it. Any of you that so understand what it is I'm saying here, I think. Don't make your margins too tight. Part of the problem is, I think that looks good. I think that's what I want. So we're gonna pin that in place and I'm gonna sew it on the regular machine. Fade a lot, fade a lot. She needs a theme song. It's not this. Cool, right there. So I'm just gonna sew that up. See that? Beautiful, beautiful. Sew it up. Um, do I need to move the serger away? Do we even need baby lock? And um, I don't care as much about the thread color. I know that may be sacrilegious for most of you real sewers out there. Um, I'm just, no one's going to look at it and go, oh my god, you used the wrong thread color. No, no one's going to look at it that closely. And the ones that do are going to love that I chose this contrasting thread color. And it's just going to be a different green, let's be honest. Oh, red and green. Eh, it'll be all right. The red will pop through a little bit. It'll be fine. Um, snag it down, fold the pen, sew forward, sew back, and then finish and sew forward and back. Forward, back, forward, all the way, but not over the pen. Oh, I am drawing on the small side. That'll be okay. And I might go twice just because of the graying nature of this fabric. of a delicate nature. It does seem to be holding up all right though. Eh, I don't think I need to. 
it's probably just going to get a lot of abuse there. Let's be honest. So we trim the point off after we take the mag magnet off of our scissors. I never picked up my scissors and accidentally had a magnet on them. This is the first time. So there is a flaw in the magnetic system that I use that I developed really previously. I'm not going to just say I told myself. Um, onward, onward. Okay, we're going to move baby lock away again. Just, just need for that one seam. You can see why people would have like multiple sewing machines set up in a single room. Um, and especially after having used those other machines, like, and I see points to them that are outside of like what I do with my machines. You know, I always thought like, like a Bernina or something like that, that does a lot of fine sewing would maybe have made sense for me one day, but um, after having <laughs> played with um, those other machines at school, I'm, I'm understanding maybe um, there might be personalities involved and I don't completely understand that. So this is the inside edge. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm gonna mark that. I moved this in a little too soon. Uh, just real quick, so I know where I want to sew to make sure I'm capturing that and not missing it. So we're going to line it up with this edge, make it parallel. It doesn't matter about the ruler underneath. I just need to be sure this stays about the same. See that? And then I'll carry it over. About. No one's going to notice fluttering in the wind if it's not perfectly straight geometrically, okay? There we go. Not bad, not bad. Um, now we'll do the same thing to the yellow. And it really does come in quite a bit more than I anticipated. Okay, okay. If I keep with that parallel, will that be straight enough? We're going to let it go out just a smidge. Not that much. Right here. We're going to follow it down. I did try to do this with math. Apparently I didn't do it super well. I am making, I, I learned in my last one that um, I didn't make this opening hole very wide, which was a challenge. I'm making it wider this time. Um, and now that I think about it, I'm going to add a loop here um, for the L wire. Oh, I need to add a, add a loop everywhere for the L wire. Um, I didn't think this through for the L wire. That's fine. I'm not super worried. I always make another one. Um, I was thinking of having it like zigzag across a flag, but that's excessive maybe. So where would you want L wire on this? Um, gonna affect the flappiness of it. We'll make another one another day for the L wire. I need to think through that more for the flag. I thought through it for the bag, but not the flag. Um, really, I think I just want it over the top here. Let's do it. Let's add what I want. Um, this, is a, this is it in. And it'll be an option that I can always add. Um, so we'll cut a bunch of these at like two inches um, and that two inch length will be excessive for what we're about to do but we're gonna pin the bad boy in to um, oh, I made that one wrong that's fine you can always cut down right that's the whole thing behind it sewing customizing Here we go, some two inch strips of ribbon. Then I tried to invent a product. No, I didn't invent the product. I just tried to make a product that had ribbon. It's not, you don't think of ribbon as being an athletic fabric that's gonna withstand sun, rain, and snow. I could totally bike in the snow, but I could, I could if I wanted to.
really wanted it to be that gray fabric though. Why? I don't know. I have no rational reason. None at all. Bunch of these, just a bunch. I, I should have counted how many I really needed. This is probably excessive. Um, so we're gonna, we're just gonna pin them in here, right? And they're gonna be loops, pinned in as loops. We want one at the corner, that's gonna be three. Just like this. And we're not going to want them to be too big. Truth be told, we want them to be small so it holds on to that L wire real nice. See what I'm doing? I know it might be kind of hard, but making it loop right there, I think, will give us what we want. without flanking out too much of the L wire. Maybe if I'm really lucky, it'll like shine through it. We could test that right now, but I'm not gonna because I really wanna get this at least done. Um, but I have to go in like five minutes. So <laughs> there you go, it may not happen. All because of a ribbon. Life is hard, man. I measure this because I'm, you know, usually pretty fastidious about these things. So this thing's going to be, uh, it's, it's about 16 inches long. So at the eight inch mark, that's the eight inch mark. You can see it. You can see it. There we are. That's the eight inch mark. I'm going to pin the next one. I'm going to pin my pin. Even that feels pretty thick for L wire, but we're gonna lose some to the uh, sewing. Let's take a look, line it up. Where does it end up, really? Yeah, it's tight. I think it's perfect. About right here. Just like that. Pull it out a little bit so we don't need it to be quite that deep and pin it in. Oh, you can't even see me right now. Is that enough? Three? Probably. It's about eight inches, eight inches. Yeah, I like that. Do I want to add the L wire along both sides? I feel like I do. Oh. Oh, my L wire may be a bit short. I think this is good. I'm gonna go with it. We're gonna sew it down. We're gonna start here in the corner. Just remember, we're gonna sew carefully. I'm actually gonna start here because that corner piece is gonna be a pain. We'll lift it, set on the pin, but we're gonna pull that pin. You 
making it as straight as I can. Remember, again, pulling these needles. I'm hoping the ribbon doesn't move too much in the meantime. And I suspect it is. Remember, you can't turn a serger. I mean, you can kind of, but... not my worst second job. Okay. Okay. And so we see and we look for a ribbon and can't find a ribbon. There's one. There's one. Ooh, that's tiny. Let's see if it works. Let's remember the other one. It is present. Better. This one is tiny also. We'll, we'll see. They may be much too small. And now we're going to sew down this way. And I'm going to pull that back um, with a pin. Move it forward a bit because As that exists right now, I think it's going to get sewn through. I think even right now it might even get sewn through, but we'll figure it out. It's going to get sewn through. I'm learning things. It'll make it better on the bag. Definitely got some through, the same. If you were wondering, you don't have to wonder anymore. Don't go through the needle. Checking for wrinkles. I think I've got one. I don't like wrinkles. What are you? I don't know. We'll find out. So through whatever it is. some silicone grease on the wall over there. I could throw that on here, but I really don't know what's making the noise. Great. We now have the answer as to uh, what size bamboo rod I'm going to need to get here. And now we're going to pull this entire flag out this tiny hole. And based on how pulling has gone elsewhere today, we're going to leave it at this. This is my flag, okay? It's the inside out of my flag, but it's my flag. Um, I will pull this out and work on this, you know, over time, uh, but not on stream with y'all, okay? So this is my flag. It's going to go on a pole. It's going to live like this, and it's going to, like, help people see me. And it's not in any safety color, so no one's going to claim I'm, like, looking like cops or anything like that. Um, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to get hopefully cars to like point and laugh instead of miss me and then hit me, miss, miss seeing me and then hit me. That's, that's the worst. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's my goal I'm heading towards right now. Um, and I will work on it. And then hopefully next week we'll actually get to the bags because I'll have learned not to make my own ribbon. 
essentially. I mean, it, it, it was going to be dull sight. It was going to be weather safe. It was going to be all these things. And I just overdid it and over planned, I guess. Um, yeah, the black stitching is showing a little bit, but I really don't mind that much. I mean, yeah, perfect stitching, perfect colors. That would have been cool, but whatever. I'm fine. And this fabric is thinner and slick enough that it is coming through this hole very reasonably. Uh, we'll see when we get to the thickest parts, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this is going already. See, this is how it's supposed to go. See this? Yeah. But I got to get my lesson together to go teach um, the kids. What are we doing today? Um, it's the space stuff. We did the moon. We might be doing asteroids or comets. I might be teaching about asteroids or comets this afternoon. Um, so that's really fun because we get to talk. We get to use crystals and gemstones to talk about what the, the water content is or isn't um, on a comet or an asteroid, um, what the tail becomes and is made up of. And yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Um, the kids love it and they make something beautiful. And the class is pretty rocking too. It's a good class. Um, I'm pretty happy. The resources at the school are fantastic. Um, so, you know, good, good, good stuff, good stuff. Um, anything else exciting? I don't know. I got my class and that, that shall be good. That shall be really good. Um, but yeah, I guess it's time for me to go. Uh, peace, love, and science, y'all. I hope your day gets better. You know, not that yours was bad, but mine was a little rough. So peace, love, and science.